Hey, what's up everyone? How you all doing? So any of you who played Warframe during those seven days around Tenocon should have gotten or is in the process of having an Ash Prime giving through them for free by Digital Extremes. So everyone in the community can be a feckin' Ash Hole. You're an Ash Hole, he's an Ash Hole, he's a huge Ash Hole. Like, okay, fun for everyone. Now, he is an incredibly good Warframe that can dish out a lot of damage. He can strip 100% of enemy armor, can go stealth for a period of time and can room clear when he needs to. Not to mention if you choose to build your Ash Prime for a fatal teleport build in combination with a covert lethality dagger or even with Umbra's new sword the Skia Jatty which can be used for free stealth on finishers with Ash with that fatal teleport augment it's an incredibly good setup. But fatal teleport and a covert lethality dagger is an insanely powerful setup that I personally just find boring so I don't really run it. But I will show you all three of my Ash Prime builds, the Seeking Shuriken, the Fatal Teleport and of course the Rising Ash Hole. Now since I have this extra Ash Prime I figured it would be a good time to stick on some of the Umbral mods and see what kind of build I could actually get because he's not the typical Warframe that you would expect some of those Umbral mods on like the tank Warframes that everyone is putting those mods on like Nidus, Ineros, Chroma, Rhino, Oberon and so on. Now I wanted to build an Umbral Ash for a combination of Seeking Shuriken, but also I wanted to be able to use his Blade Storm if I needed to. Now, I like using both of those abilities if I need, depending on what targets I'm up against, whether it's large groups or whatnot. So this is my Seeking build. I went for four Format Ash Prime, two Umbral Mods. I left the Umbral Fiber out, but if you wanted to, you could stick it in. If you can manage to get a solid build around, having all three of those goddamn Umbral Mods equipped. Now this build has no negative stats in terms of duration efficiency and so on. My Ash Prime has got nearly 1300 health. He's got 13 seconds of stealth. Almost 13 seconds as well on that 100% armor strip from Seeking Shuriken as well as having those shurikens deal over 1100 slash damage and his blade storm hits for 7200 which also scales up with your melee combo counter. Whew, that's a mouthful. Now you could drop duration for August Secrets and bump that power level up to nearly 250 if you prefer just using Blade Storm again, that's entirely up to you. This is my build, so whatever works for you, then just do it. Now, I know if I wanted to mod for just Seeking Shuriken on its own, then all I would need is roughly 145% power strength. That will strip 100% of all enemy armor each time. But like I said, I like using Blade Storm as well as a crowd clearer whenever I need to. So I've built a little bit of a balanced build. If you choose to go for just Seeking Shuriken, of course you might need more efficiency as well because you're going to be spamming that ability. Now my other two builds are Fatal Teleport, which has negative duration, but with Arcane Trickery or with the Ski Jatty, you're invisible for most of the damn time anyway. Like I said, a Covert Lethality Dagger is best with this, but the Ski Jatty is pretty damn good as well. Now the final build is just an alteration of my Blade Storm setup with its Augment, the Rising Storm Augment, but Configuration A is what I will run on this Umbral Ash Hole build most of the time. Now let me just share a few handy tips for running Bladestorm and getting the most out of it that you possibly can. The Venka Prime has a higher melee combo multiplier than any of our other melee weapons in game which allows you to build that combo counter a lot faster than you would normal melee weapons which in turn means you're going to be dealing a lot more damage. So this greatly benefits Bladestorm. It is the only weapon that does and it will ramp up your damage a lot faster so for that reason it is the ideal Bladestorm weapon. Now Arcane Fury, Arcane Trickery and Arcane Ultimatum are really good arcanes to run with your Ash Prime. Trickery will give you the chance to go stealthed a lot of the time once your clones get those kills so it's an extra free invisibility. Ultimatum will give you a chance for 600 armor on top of what you already have make you that little bit tankier and Arcane Fury has a chance to increase your melee damage by 120% for 12 seconds on a critical hit. Now the the only melee mods that affect your blade storm ability are combo mods like body count drifting contact and so on speed mods like fury will speed up the animation of those clones killing things and attacking your enemies 
but Berserker does not work. So remember that, don't have Berserker equipped if all you're gonna be using your melee weapon for is to boost your blade storm's damage output. Also, something that is very important to know is that even though blade storm attacks give a guaranteed slash proc, they do not scale your combo counter with relentless combination. So contrary to popular belief, relentless combination on your melee weapon does not work with Bladestorm, it just doesn't. It won't scale your combo counter up with Bladestorm's slash procs. Relentless combination only increases your combo counter from your actual melee weapons slash procs and its attacks, not from Bladestorm. So if you're modding your melee weapon with Relentless combination, thinking it scales your Bladestorm bleeds, then you're wrong. It will scale with your normal melee weapon only which you can still use to the benefit of your combo counter if you choose to. Now there was or might still be a bug in the simulacrum that allows it to scale with the host, but in normal missions, a relentless combination just doesn't. Now as always, I've used the Umbral mods on this build because I had an extra ash and I didn't want to mess up my original builds. And I've done this in a video, so you don't have to do it. You can see or get an idea of what you can achieve with a couple of former on frames that Umbral mods aren't exactly designed for. They cost way too much mod capacity on all of our warframes. But let me know what you think of my Umbral ash hole. You like it? No? <laughs> Do me a huge favor, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, or don't if you didn't. Subscribe for more Warframe, and as always, thanks very much for watching. I think I've got a great actual.